Hello again. It's lovely to be back with you. It's the beginning of November and we're recording my first Christmas demonstration for you. I'm looking out onto a beautifully sunny morning and from this window I can see a glorious liquid amber tree which is in our garden and uh, it is in its full glory at the moment. We're just waiting for the winds to come and take all the leaves down but it is looking particularly special at the moment. So for this Christmas demonstration um, I have started it. I have a very substantial pot and because of the plant material I'm going to use I've put some stones in the bottom of it to make it particularly heavy and then I've filled it with floral foam. I've used the black noir foam because I felt that would, that would recede and uh, wouldn't uh, interfere with my design. I haven't taped it because it's actually very secure in the pot, it's very absolutely to the size and uh, as you'll see I've absolutely filled the top of the pot. I've done it on a tall pot, this design, you could do a similar design on a, on a lower but quite a, a wide bowl I think. So, so you didn't get too bored with me uh, just putting in foliage. You'll see I've put some um, curled aspidistra leaves. Uh, they were a bit dirty when they came so I've had to give them a wash and I gave them a little bit of leaf shine or you could use olive oil or something like that just to give them a slight sheen. I didn't want too much. Um, I've got some Fatsia japonica and uh, the plain green one and I've just put that opposite the Aspidistra and I thought well we ought to have some some holly in here it's just plain holly I think it's self-seeded in the garden but I thought that would that would go very well in here so I'm just going to continue filling I'm just filling around the edge because my main plant material is going to go in the middle and I don't want to to take up that space so I've got some, some of the lovely uh, ivy from the garden, the tree ivy, with, which has still got berries on. The birds haven't eaten them yet, so uh, I'm going to bring some of that down to the front here. And if, if it's a bit tall or lanky, I sometimes just take the, the berries out and uh, maybe just use the leaves because you can always just pop that in lower, and so it goes in lower down because sometimes they're, they're very long stalks on them and it just takes it slightly out of proportion so that one is really a little bit longer than I want so I'll take, take the middle out and just use the berries actually I don't want too many berries in there because it's I like it as a contrast foliage and I don't want it to confuse the design so I'll just take those. So there we are, we've got some holly and some ivy, very traditional for Christmas. Uh, so now I'm going to put in some other bits and pieces I've, I've got. Um, I've got these lovely artificial fruits which I thought these will go very well with my, my, my main flower but they also go very nicely with my pot and, uh, and it's also it's quite an autumnal colour really but uh, I thought this, was, uh, this is particularly good for the, my flowers so I'm just going to use a group of these in with my aspidistras, keeping them together, keeping them in a, in a small group. So now I'm going to go for my main plant because I want to get that in and then I can fill afterwards but I really want to get these these flowers in and those of you who've done classes with me will know that I love amaryllis for Christmas and uh, we always 
we always enjoy using them. So these I've had for a week or so to get them out into flower. They're just coming out beautifully now. I chose the terracotta colour primarily because I knew I'd got this pot that it worked with but I also think it's a nice a nice colour to work. We're going to work it with red and uh, that will be a nice Christmas colour so maybe a slightly alternative Christmas. So I'm going to cut the stem. I've decided how tall I want it about like that and I'm going to cut this stem and I do it with a knife and I do a straight cut as you know they have hollow stems now sometimes people fill them with water and stuff them with cotton wool at the end to keep them keep them moist I'm, I'm not going to do that but I'm going to use a stick up the hollow stem and you push it up and you'll feel it just go into the top there and then I'm going to take off some of the stick but I want some of this stick to go into the oops we'll find that bit later we want it to go into the foam So I'm placing it sort of towards the back and I'm just going to push the end of the stem in slightly. It's firm. I wouldn't take it in a car because it will rock around. If you're going to transport it, take them out and put them in a box to transport them. So there's my first placement. I see this. I've got one to three blooms out and I've got another bloom to come so I've, I've still got a bit of joy to come in these okay so the second one this one's slightly more out than the first one all four flowers are out and that is going to come down even shorter and to the side so I'm going to cut that one down too And I want another stick. Cut that one off. Oh, sure. Put my secateurs in. So I'm going to bring that one slightly forward. beautiful and I don't think they're expensive for what you get because they last a long time you get real impact with these so you can often find them in in some of the supermarkets near a Christmas so you don't have to buy them from the wholesaler as I have and then I've got one more this one's quite a full one and I'm going to have him quite low down I've cut it even shorter than I plan to. You need a really sharp knife because you don't want to squash the stem. So make sure you've got something quite sharp. And then I'm going to put that on. Actually, the bit that I cut off might just work. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to have that one coming quite low down the front. Yeah, that's looking good. Pleased with that. So three stems. And that's what you quite often see in bunches in, in some of the supermarkets at Christmas. So I'm not going to move it because it, uh, it doesn't like being moved. Okay, so that's the, those bits in. I've got some other colour that I want to put in. And I told you about my liquid amber when I was just down the drive picking some of this foliage and these were on the ground. Um, and so I picked them and I've wired them together. I just thought the colours were so stunning. And I thought we might put, put those in towards the back. I've left a long wire on them. I'll cut that off. 
and we'll, we'll pop it in going down the back here. Might even cut it shorter. I think these were, I, I picked some of these last year to use at uh, Salisbury Cathedral, so I thought they, you know, they are a stunning colour. You get the reds and the yellows and the oranges. But I thought the shape of them was the same as the Fatsia, so I thought they would go nicely with that. And it takes your colour through to the back of the arrangement too. So you can see it better than I can, but if you look, it takes the colour through. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit more foliage in the back here. I've got another uh, fatsia leaf that I'll pop in around here. There we are. And then I've got a little bit more holly that I'll pop in around there to thicken it up. The black foam does work quite well because you do lose lose it. You don't you don't see it. I wonder if They'll, or they may already do a black tape because I would have considered using a black tape across it. I think either the clear or the green would have would have really showed up too much. So, so there's a bit of bit of fill in the back there. I've got another aspidistra leaf, and I'm going to put that somewhere in the middle there of that side. So I'm going to cut that down. Now some of them I curled and used my stapler with, but some, the one at the front, I've just I've put the end in, and then I've I've just played around with a with a curl. So you know you can you can do it as you want. It's a good way of, of actually covering foam sometimes to just use uh, use an aspidistra, and then you just put some put a German pin. In. Yeah, that just it just covers a bit of foam on the side there. So I've got a couple of other things to add. We might just need a little bit of, of ivy in the front here. Just so you can't see too much. So that's a bad leaf on it. So the other thing I've got is to reuse or to re to upcycle or whatever you like to call it, the stems that you cut off of the amaryllis, and I think this is the one. Yeah, I'm going to put one in here, just beside that one, and I'm going to put another one. Just going to cut that one slightly. The, the, when they've been in water, the stems of the amaryllis go curly. It's quite interesting, um, and uh, I think you might be able to do something clever with that. But uh, certainly not me today. So I'm pushing those stems in there, and then I've got a couple of beautiful. Well, I don't know if you call them baubles. They're like they look like minarets to me. So I put one in there. And, oh, can't get it in. Move it back a little bit. That flower is so big, I can't get it in there. We'll put it in a bit behind. Slightly lost. And then we'll put a third one. I'll put just in the foam, just here. Him 
move this one slightly further over. So we have the minarets. Reminds me of the Three Kings or something like that. Now, I've also got this flat middle eno cane, which you can put some, if you want to add a little extra. Just curl it round. little bit lower than that. Sometimes that's it. I think I've got a couple of those. I'll pop one starts round here and comes round the front and goes in amongst the astrodistras I think. I can find the foam again. They give you some enclosed space. I think they balance the, uh, the space here and the, the heaviness of, of those. I'm just going to move that one slightly. I want him to come slightly more around the back, I think. Slightly more there, maybe. Trying to get it to sit where you exactly want it is slightly difficult. Yeah, maybe that's, that's better. It may be slightly too long. If you wanted to just cover your foam, if you were concerned, uh, you could put a little bit of moss in just, just between the stems. But with this black, it, to be honest, it really doesn't show, so I'm not sure that you need it. So, that is my Christmas design for you. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope uh, you'll have a go at it. Thank you very much for watching and may I be probably not the first person but may I wish you all a very happy and healthy Christmas and let's look forward to better things in the new year. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed my first design. When I was putting my bits and pieces away in my flower shed, I found something and it reminded me of a design that I did with my flower club for Hardy's Cottage last year. Actually, it was for the visitor centre at Hardy's Cottage. And the rangers wanted something that was fairly natural to go in with the, with the area because it's on the edge of the woods. So what I found was these beautiful agapanthus seed heads, which I'd been given by a gardener. He'd cut them off, um, my mum and dad's gardener actually, he thought they might be useful. So I, I sprayed them gold and uh, I'll show you what I did with them. For this one, I've found I've got this nice wooden box, uh, which I, again I've not used, so I'm glad to be using it. I filled it with floral foam, but I covered the floral foam with this gold fabric. It was a roll that I bought at the Wholesalers, I think it's an Oasis product, but we've used, I've used it a number of times uh, for this type of design. So when we did it at Hardy's, I actually covered it with moss because we, it was in, in the woods and I wanted it to be very natural, but I thought we'd have a slightly more sophisticated version this time. So it is very simple, so what I'm going to do is to start off, to get through the fabric, I'm just going to put my knife in to just help me. I've actually used dry floral, floral foam in the bottom so you'll hear it crunch, but if you've got wet foam that, you've, that has dried out I think that would be equally okay. 
my box has got some weight in it I mean these are very light but it has got some weight in it so just think about that because you don't want it falling over so I've cut my agapanthus to a variety of lengths I'll just do a cross I think it will make it slightly easier to get my stems in say there's, there's some very tall ones and there's some shorter ones. I'm going to put a shorter one in the back there. So varying the heights and trying not to put them too much in a row, although they are a bit in a row. It's not a very deep container. Just want one that's slightly shorter than that. Yes, that will do us fine. So pop that one in here. There we are different different heights. I'm going to have another tall one at the back there. It's lovely when you're given these things by people, and and I had them sitting around for a while, not really working out what I was going to do with it but uh, this worked really well and was very much appreciated at the visitor centre people a lot of people commented on it so uh, I thought that was that was encouraging it's always nice for designs to be appreciated but it is very simple Oops. doesn't want to go in that time So I've varied the, the heights on them. I don't need all of them. I've got some of these lovely tall cones as well. And I thought they kept the linear design. So I'm going to add some of those in amongst the agapanthus stems. So it just gives us a different form in amongst them. Uh, so put one. I also used this design in church last year. Um, and, and again, it was, it was in a, an arched area and needed just something very, very long. And I, I had them all uh, along there on quite high up so that you could see them and again that worked very well and you know it's cheap it's not costing you you anything so I've got some more of these cones that I've that I've wired and I'm going to tuck some of those in as well so just keeping them upright another one down here We need another one in the back, I think. So it's beginning to look a bit like a forest. That one just needs to be slightly shorter. So they're all wired in the traditional cone method, which you're all, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Just put, I think we'll just need one more, maybe a short agapanthus in at, at the back there. Just we might have another one low down here. So, there we are.
I think this is, is that's actually the better side. So if you had that on a window sill or something like that, I think I think that would work. I like the clean lines of this design. Without anything extra, you can imagine how it looked with the with the moss in the bottom and we put a few cones in the bottom. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it just gives you a little bit more inspiration. So although I like the clean lines of this design, some of you might like to add a little extra something. And I had a little rummage in my Christmas box and found a couple of things that I thought might go in as well. So we'll try it out and see if you like the other the other alternative. I've had these these lovely gold glittered leaves for a while and I thought perhaps we could use those. So I thought perhaps just a couple If they are wired so you can bend them as you want. Just a couple in in there. Maybe a couple more in this side. wire slightly shorter. A huge amount of foam in the bottom of this box. And then I thought, well it would be up to you. Maybe you've got some gold baubles or be berry-like uh, artificial material. I've got some red ones here and I thought well perhaps I could add, add those in just to give it a little bit of colour rather than keeping it totally to the gold, gold theme. Um, I have got some gold ones that would work quite nicely but anyhow I'll show it to you the red ones. So that just gives it a little bit more Christmas glitz and a little bit of colour, just a touch. So. I hope that uh, you like that design too. Once again, Happy Christmas!